my name is Sam from a, my own company called Sam Safaris and I like to introduce uh, people to some of my very unusual animals from around the world. Now I'm going to show you first of all something very small. I'm going to try and hold it up to the camera so hopefully you will be able to see a little glimpse of it. It is quite a small animal but it's very interesting. It's called a Madagascan hissing cockroach. So Madagascar is a big island that's off of Africa, so it's lovely and warm. And you perhaps would have heard of ring-tailed lemurs, all the different lemurs actually come from Madagascar, and they like to eat these. So this is a Madagascan hissing cockroach. Now, Colin hasn't hissed, but the reason for this is because he is very, very well handled. So they only tend to hiss if they get a little bit scared. And it is a good deterrent from predators because if they heard a hissing sound, they might think it's something different like a snake or a big lizard. And in fact, it's just Colin. So Colin has got a very unusual skeleton. He hasn't got bones inside his body at all. What he has is a layer of skin on the outside. It's called an exoskeleton. Now I can tell this is Colin because he's got two big horns on the top of his where his head is on top of there the exoskeleton and this looks like he's got two big eyes now he's got six legs so he's classed as an insect and insects don't have any ears so he uses his rather long antennae for feeling touching finding food and also picking up sound waves on his little feet, he's got hooks so he can hold on to me really, really tight, but he can also climb. So I've got a piece of bark from a tree here. So if I can put him on there and I'll have a little climb, but also then you can see his lovely camouflage. There you go, up he goes. So really good at climbing. In fact, cockroaches can get almost anywhere. And if you've ever had them in your home, you will know this, Tiny little hiss there when I take, took them off the, the piece of wood. So if uh, if he wants to dig, he'll dig. The females will dig to lay their eggs, so they're really well hidden. And they're one of the creatures that can escape human uh, made and uh, natural disasters. So man-made and hu um, natural disasters. They dig really deep underground, would live on leaf matter and roots of plants. Now I'm gonna put Colin away and I'm gonna show you one other of my animals who is quite, uh, is a lot bigger, shall we say, and would probably like to eat Colin the cockroach. So I have to make sure that all the animals are put away in their correct little containers. They don't live in these small containers. I actually have a huge animal room, which is really nice and warm, set up for each and individual animal. So I'm going to show you Barry, who is a big lizard. And Barry is called a blue tongued skink. So hopefully I might show you his big blue tongue in a minute. So I'll give him a little tickle under his chin. There you go, big blue tongue. And he uses that tongue not only to taste with, but also to scare off predators. So if he feels a little bit threatened, instead of hissing like the cockroach, he opens his mouth really wide and he waggles his big blue tongue about, hoping that a predator might be a little bit scared of a big blue tongue. Color in the animal world tends to mean danger. So having a bright blue tongue hopefully would help him, but he's also got this amazing camouflage. So he lives on the ground and he can hide under leaf matter and wood and bits of bark of tree. And hopefully he will disguise himself, but he will eat all sorts. So not only will he eat little cockroaches, he would eat grubs, snails, slugs, worms, ants, spiders, but also eggs, small mice, small lizards and uh, berries and leaves. So he's total omnivore, a bit like the cockroach, we'll have a go at anything. So he comes from Australia and Australia on my map over here, 
uh, is actually uh, such a very country. It's got very hot areas, really dry, arid areas. It's got grasslands, woodlands, rainforests and mountain areas. And he comes from areas of woodland, grassland. And my auntie actually has one in our garden in Canberra. So it's not a pet one, it's actually a wild one. And she loves it because it eats all the slugs and snails. So they're quite fond of these types of lizards in sort of coming in to say hello into people's gardens because they keep all the other animals that tend to eat all their fruit and vegetables and their flowers. So he is very, very scaly. When you stroke him, you can feel each individual scale. And when he sheds his skin, we have to give him a little massage to get all that dead skin off his body. He would spend a lot of time rubbing his body against bits of wood and rocks to get rid of the dead skin. And he's got a prehensile tail. So his tail actually helps him to balance. But also, if he was clambering over something, felt it was going to slip, he would curl his tail around the piece of wood and hopefully not slip and hurt himself because he has got very tiny little legs so he can clamber around but he's not very good at climbing straight up so only clambering over things but he is very good at digging you will notice when he is on my map he actually keeps his tummy very close to the floor and he almost slides along mimicking a snake which is also very clever because in Australia, there's some quite dangerous snakes. So all these things that animals do to protect themselves, are very, very clever. So I hope that was a, a good introduction to just a couple of my animals and myself. And I hope to see you all soon. Thank you, bye.